Um, I'm here talking to Martin O'Grady, chairperson of the TUI branch of IT Tralee, about the Croke Park proposals and their impacts. major way that will affect lecturers is that a new contract of employment will be in place by next September and that that will be an imposed contract. There will be no time for negotiation, no time for further consultation. The proposals uh, envisage that simply happening between now and next September. In a very major way is what we anticipate. Uh, in effect, we're buying, we would be buying into an unknown here, uh, but based on what we know IoT Ireland have been seeking, we can anticipate an increase of around 11 weeks additional, the equivalent of 11 weeks additional teaching. Um, major changes in terms of the working day, that the uh, premium for uh, the evening um, uh, lectures will be removed and that the normal working day will move from um, 9, will, will become 9 to 10 at night and very possibly the introduction of uh, Saturday working as well and we would expect that uh, major change in terms of the amount of weeks lecturing one will do in the year because uh, simply to accommodate what is being sought which is effectively a third semester that there would need to be a major reduction in holidays. Yes, because the proposals as a whole uh, are predicated on very major savings for the Exchequer. And one of the major ways that the savings will come is reduction in the number of public servants. And it is envisaged that uh, all public servants will, including lecturers, will be amenable to relocation and relocation countrywide. Uh, specifically, the proposal state relocation within geographical areas where possible. But where not possible, it's clear that the intention is to relocate countrywide. And that opens the door for the merging of institutes of technology, the movement of staff from one to another, or to other. Uh, public uh, service jobs across the, the sector, uh, across the whole of the public services, and also the closure of departments and the uh, uh, moving of jobs from one location to another. Inevitably there are negative impacts on pay in so far as that the premium for the evening uh, lectures of one and a half um, times premium is uh, planned to be removed. Um, in addition, there's uh, the abolition of exam payments. Um, exams are paid for, the correction of exams are paid for separately at the moment. That's to be abolished. There is the intention to introduce a, a, a new grade of lecturer at low pay, a sort of yellow pack teaching only grade of lecturer. Um, and of course, it is intended that there would be easier dismissal of lecturers um, uh, based on the reaching of performance standards and dismissal uh, would be made easier for people not reaching specific performance standards. So there's very likely going to be considerable impacts on pay. There is a vague promise that there will be no further pay cuts, but that is vague because it's stated that the, all the commitments that the government makes in the proposals um, may be off if there are unforeseen economic shocks um, to the system. And since we don't know what's unforeseen and we don't know what uh, an economic uh, downturn might be defined as, we've no guarantee that uh, there won't be uh, further uh, pay cuts. And as for restoration of the pay scales that we've lost due to the cuts, all that there is a commitment to is to review uh, a commitment that was already there in the emergency legislation through which the pay cuts were introduced. There is pointedly no commitment whatsoever to restore pay. There is a commitment to review pay, and a review of pay could result in an increase or a decrease in pay. 
No. That's a misconception. Uh, what's being voted on here are the terms of the proposals. Um, nothing more. There is no um, implication that a no vote means a strike vote. It simply means that we accept or reject the proposals. And insofar as increased industrial action is likely to follow uh, the, Deputy, the General Secretary of the TUI, Peter McMiniman, has explicitly stated that nothing will happen uh, at least until the autumn. So there's no inevitable uh, strike implication from the rejection of the proposals. There's another uh, serious misconception that uh, a lot of people are possessed of, um, and that is that Ireland is somehow broke. Ireland remains, is, was, and still is a rich country with a great deal of wealth. The simple fact is that the government has refused to impose any taxes or increased taxes on that wealth, except for taxes on public servants in the guise of pay cuts. If the government chose, they could levy higher taxes to fund adequate public services much more easily through uh, an increase of taxation across the system, much more evenly balanced. It is a policy decision not to do so. It has nothing to do with the wealth that's available. There's ample wealth available. Um, the savings in last year's uh, public service pay cuts was on the order of 1 billion. We're now going to give 1.3 billion to the Greek economy to bail it out. And we're giving untold billions to bail out banks that have no benefit to Irish society, specifically Anglo-Irish Bank. Uh, 